Okay, so far we have discussed how to determine geostatic stresses in the vertical direction, that is vertical geostatic stresses, and also lateral or horizontal geostatic stresses which act in the horizontal direction. Okay? The vertical stress, sigma, and the vertical effective stress, sigma prime, act on the horizontal plane, and the horizontal stress, sigma h, and the horizontal effective stress, sigma h prime, they act on the vertical plane. Okay, so if we have a point in a material, it doesn't have to be soil, it could be anything, right? Then if we want to denote the vertical stress acting on that point, or on that, at that point, then we call that vertical stress, the horizontal stress is this one, and just to denote the effective stresses in the case of soil, Okay. Sometimes we use, instead of sigma v, we may use sigma z, because we know that z is the vertical direction, the vertical axis. Okay. And the analogous uh, version of this one would be sigma x, because we know that x is the horizontal axis, z is the vertical one, right? Okay, so those are the geos. In this case, the uh, the vertical and the horizontal stresses. Okay, and we have uh, we have knowledge of how to determine them for a profile. Okay, so just for a quick summary, let's say that we have a profile, right? We have a bunch of layers. We have a point here. Here's the water table. A, B, C. Gamma 1, gamma 2. This is the same soil, right? Maybe, for example, seal descent. But uh, above the water table, it's dry. That is, we assume, right? And below the water table, it's saturated. Therefore, the, the unit weights are different. Clearly, gamma 2 is larger than gamma 1 because the soil down here is saturated. Okay? Let's say that this is um, high plasticity clay. And let's say that we have a gamma 3 here, okay? Gamma 4, rock. Well, uh, here we have also a K value for this layer and a K value for this layer, okay? So to determine the... Let's, let's determine the effective stresses at this point, the ones we know how to calculate, okay? Well, first we calculate the vertical stress that would be a times gamma 1 plus b times gamma 2 plus c times gamma 3 correct all right u at this point is a plus b plus c i'm sorry c plus b c plus b that is the pressure head right at this point that times gamma water which is 9.81 kilonewtons per meter cubed and sigma prime would be sigma vertical minus u okay how do we calculate sigma h well remember that we have to use k for that right? The coefficient of lateral earth pressure at rest, which is either this one or this one. You tell me, which one do you think? Well, if you guessed K2, you're correct, because the point is in the layer that has this K. So, we know by definition, K is sigma H prime over sigma B prime. That is the definition, right? Therefore, sigma H, at this point, is K2, which is the relevant K, times sigma V prime, which is what we have here. Okay, so that is given, that is calculated, therefore we can get that. And sigma H, is equal to sigma H prime plus U, which is here, right? U. Sigma H is this one. 
So, what the particles feel in the vertical plane at this point, plus what the water feels in all planes, because this is a pressure, is equal to what both of them feel, particles and the water, on the vertical plane. Remember that the horizontal stress acts on the vertical plane. It's a vertical plane, right? The plane is a pencil. I'm sorry for that. I'm going like this to denote the direction of the stress. Okay. Now, what happens if we have a profile? Here's our point. And we are interested not in the vertical stress or effective stress. We're not interested in the horizontal stress or the horizontal effective stress. But we are interested in a stress that acts in a plane that is not the vertical plane and is not the horizontal plane. We're interested in a stress that acts like that. Okay? At some angle from the horizontal plane. Notice that this the angle, sorry, the plane on which this stress acts, and I'm going to draw, I'm going to make this stress, uh, I'm going to name it a sigma, because it is a sigma, right? But I'm going to put a circle around it. Just to denote that it's some some stress that we want to determine, and it acts not on the vertical plane, not in the horizontal plane, but it acts on that plane, right? Remember that a sigma always acts normal to the plane on which it acts. So this plane here is not vertical and it's not horizontal. So what do we do? I should draw the plane through the point, huh? The plane should go through the point, so let me make this point big like that. Okay, so what do we do? Well, the first thing we do is we realize, first of all, we realize that the ground is flat. Okay? If the ground is flat, and horizontal, we should say, because we can have a flat ground that is at an angle. So we should say, if the ground is flat and horizontal, which is typical, is the typical case of a site in the field, okay? If the ground is flat and horizontal, and if no construction of foundations or a structure or something like that is going on, which is typically the case bef before we start constructing in a site, or, of course, then sigma h and sigma v, and also sigma h prime and sigma v prime, are special. Okay? They, have a, they are special stresses. Remember that, I should go back and say, remember that this is the case of geostatic of a geostatic condition, right? A geostatic condition is, is one in which there's no construction or going on. There's no excavation, nothing like that, okay? This is called geostatic. A geostatic condition, okay? Now, if there is a geostatic condition and the ground is flat and horizontal, then the horizontal stresses and the vertical stresses are special. They are principal stresses. Okay, so if these two conditions are met, these four stresses here are called principal stresses. Now, from knowledge of solid mechanics, you should know that a principal stress has a special meaning, of course. What is a principal stress? Let's write it here in case you don't remember. A principal stress is a sigma. A normal stress that acts on a plane on which there is 
no shear okay and the shear stress is denoted by tau okay so let's go back to a little drawing here's our horizontal plane and our vertical stress that vertical stress is a principal stress either the sigma or the sigma both the sigma and the sigma sorry the sigma vertical and the sigma vertical prime both those stresses that act on the horizontal plane are principal stresses because the ground is flat and horizontal and there's no construction or excavation etc going on that stress okay or those two stresses sigma sigma v prime and sigma v they're principal and what that means is that on the horizontal plane which is the plane on which those two stresses act, act that plane holds or, or exhibits no shear stress. There is no shear stress on this plane. And there is no, she there, uh, is no shear stress on this plane either. Okay, And this is because this stress is also a principal stress, because these conditions are met. Okay. So, if you were to draw this point, as an element okay and this is the the place where many students get confused there's no need to get confused this is a point and this is a point but this is a point under the microscope we just draw it as a square because that's the humanoid way of looking at things okay we like to look at things that have the specific shapes that are simple to us and therefore we just draw it like this okay this and this are exactly the same just that we draw the point in a big way like this just so that we can put arrows and things on it that's it okay so if we draw an arrow for the let's say the vertical effective stress then we know that that plane remember this is the point huh? that plane on which the stress acts is a principal plane this is a principal stress and the tau that we would draw here is zero now here we should also draw sigma v prime they are one okay this is also may, may be confusing you may you may think that this stress 30 kPa is equal to this stress 30 kPa and think that there are two of them no there's not two of them there's only one this one and this one are the same one Okay, and they of course have the same value because it's just one, one of them. Okay, we just draw them as a pair because we have a size to this point. Okay, now here is the horizontal effective stress. Which one? Well, the two of them make one. We, we just draw two of them because that's our way of looking at things. Okay, this stress is this stress. They are the same stress. There's only one of them. Okay, but we draw two arrows because this point has actually a size in the piece of paper okay so there's only one sigma v prime there's only one sigma h prime because this tau is zero then this tau must be zero this tau must be zero and this tau must be zero okay why is that because we have a static case if this tau is not zero is uh, well sorry if this tau is zero and this one is not zero then actually that is a, uh, something that is um, there is a, a, a fundamental error because this tau is the same as this tau in fact this tau and this tau and this tau and this tau they are the same value okay these two are the same one and these two are the same one so there are two taus this one and this one the first one is denoted by two opposing arrows and the second one is denoted denoted by two opposing arrows that are normal to the first one okay if this one is zero then this one is is zero because this one and this one are the same they are one okay the opposite one which is denoted by these two arrows here takes the opposite has the same amplitude as this one but has the opposite sign so if this one is zero then this one would be negative zero which is zero Okay. Now, 
going back to the principal uh, stress and principal plane concepts this stress sigma v that stress is principal therefore this tau is zero this stress is principal therefore this tau is zero okay so everything makes sense now let's make a parenthesis and try to have another example where you see this the stresses again or better let's say with a more of a generic uh, not generic but uh, with numerics with numbers not numerics numbers okay here's our point we are humans therefore we draw the point like this let's say that this stress is 30 that's the vertical stress the horizontal stress is 20 that's the way that we denote those two stresses but you may say hold on there are four of them no, there's not four of them, there's two of them. One, two. Okay? Now, let's say that I tell you the shear stress here is five. Okay? That is just a way of denoting it. Automatically, you say, well, I need to add, to draw an arrow here of five. Because this and this are used to denote a stress. Just like these two arrows are used to denote this stress of 20. Okay? These two arrows here are used to denote the stress of 30. And these two arrows are used to denote the stress equal to 5. If that's the case, then I can draw here another pair of arrows that denotes the stress, shear stress, that is equal to minus 5. So we have how many stresses? 4. The 30, the 20, those are sigmas. The 5 and the minus 5, those are taus. Sigma vertical, sigma horizontal, tau, and tau. Now, why are we talking about all this? Why did we go back to solid mechanics and, and explain or clarify, let's say, or remember, try to remember these concepts? It's because, remember, we're trying to determine for a geostatic condition with a flat ground and no construction, the stress that acts in some random direction, okay? On a plane that is not a principal plane. Well. That should have been revealed later. But this plane is not a principal plane. This plane is, and this plane is. But this stress that we want acts on that plane. That plane has a certain angle, 50 degrees, say, from the horizontal axis, or from the horizontal. Okay? How do we determine that stress? Well, here's where we have to go back and realize that we have a very, very powerful tool that is called the Mohr circle. Okay? The Mohr circle is a tool. And some students uh, come into this class and they do not really have a grasp of the Mohr circle and uh, what it is and, and what, it's, what is it supposed to mean, etc. And it's very simple. It is actually just a tool, like a ruler, okay, or a calculator. It's a graphical tool that we use to determine stresses at a point.